All right, I'm back again. I set up MPC Essentials in FL Studio. I've played with it in standalone form. I only opened it in FL Studio because I was trying to get the Q knobs to work, which uh, they still are not. They work in the actual software, but I can't get them to link to the physical controller knobs. And you're supposed to be able to do that in a mode called MIDI mode, which is this icon up here. When you go into that mode, it tells you you need to connect a control surface in this mode. Well, that's the controller, so it is connected, and it doesn't seem to recognize it. You can even go into, like, options and preferences, and there's a mini mapping set up, and on the standalone, you're able to select the MPK. When I'm in my DAW, it just only lets you select DAW, but... Either way, I've tried it in both the standalone and the uh, VST software version and or plug-in version, and uh, it's not a, an option in either one. I've looked in the help manual, and to, there's in the MIDI mode there is a way you can link the Q knobs and functions to your pads, which is what I wanted to do uh, with a physical knob, but. Because I can't, I'll just have to show you on screen. Uh, it'll still work, it's just not as nice as having them on the physical knobs. And that's going to be a big turn off for a lot of people if they can't get it set up right. So I don't know what the deal is, but uh, I'm sure someone will have a solution on one of the forums. But right now, it just doesn't even recognize the controller as a control surface. It picks up the pads. All your MIDI, like your keys, you can see them hitting down there. I can hit the pads. That all works, but it's just the knobs that are not working for me, so I have to find out what the deal is. But anyway, we'll go ahead. Uh, I loaded a kit that was pre-set up. Uh, this is the... All the kits and sounds I'm using for this are from Elements of Dystopia, which is an add-on pack of sounds that they normally sell for about 50 bucks, but it came free with the downloads. Uh, for this controller. We'll get started. I loaded a kit and I'm going to show you just how you can go through sounds and drag them to your pads and all the basics. So these are the sounds that are preloaded. They're pretty noisy because some of them they have two or three sounds in one pad. You're able to layer sounds like that. So that's why some of them seem kind of muddled and noisy. So what I would want to do, like I didn't like this A9 pad, it's too noisy, it's like random sound, so I'm going to replace it with something else. And when you're going through your sounds, which you have to navigate to the right folders, you have to know where your sounds are at basically, so that's kind of a pain in the ass if, like in this case it took me a while to even know where this folder was downloaded to. But uh, once you find it, all your sounds are over here. And you can right click the mouse to sort of preview the sound. So if you hold it down, you can go through and just find the sound you like. I'm going to take this hi hat and replace that pad with that hi hat. So now, oops, oh, I bet it's detuned. Uh, that means I'm going to have to set the Q knob so you could see that. On the Q knob, all these controls right here <clears throat> are for that. And there's a program side and effects side. Uh, effects won't show any effects until they're already applied. Like these are already applied because this was a preset kit. And normally this would just say none until you apply effects. But as far as the program side, it has parameters like tuning, filter, uh, left and right pan, level, and then the envelopes for like attack, decay, release. And so, in this case, it sounds like they just tuned this to be a lower pitch. So, I'm going to edit that Q knob for pad 9 and the tuning in real time, just is how you want it. That definitely 
changes the pitch, but it sounds like maybe it was an effect they had. Q9. Let's see. Oh, that doesn't show any. I don't know what they have applied to it, but it changes the sound. Let me find one that's not like that. Try this one. Replace. There we go. Normal hi-hat. So, that's basically it. You just find the ones you like. And you just replace, or in, in a fresh program, you would have blank pads and you just, you wouldn't be replacing anything like I'm doing, but it's the same idea. You just find a sound you like, drag it over, and there you go. And there's, all these are for banks. On the software version, you have more than four banks. On the hardware version, you only have four buttons for banks. And speaking of the sort of workflow, if you don't normally use MPC, it's basically set up where programs are your overall kit or setup and sequences are kind of like little clips or patterns like for me I use FL Studio so I'm familiar with the idea of a pattern and each pattern is used to build a full song well on this your sequences are used to build a full song now you could make one sequence a whole song but that would be kind of overkill like it's better to use a breakup of smaller sequences and build a song from those. But like everything else, you can kind of wing it and do it your own way. Everyone's got a different method, but that's the basic setup is programs are where your overall setup goes and all your sounds and sequences are where you actually kind of break it down into the smaller parts to build up a song. But uh in this case, I had a blank program that's program 01, and then I was pulling in kits that were pre set up. So, Burnt Dreams and Call Me Shirley were kits that they, they came with Elements of Dystopia. They're just pre chosen sound setups from the Elements of Dystopia sound set. But anyway, I'm changing one of those by dragging my own sounds to it. And the basic way to record, you just literally hit record, it'll do a metronome countdown, and then you start beating out a pattern. And once you do that, it'll just keep playing that pattern in overdub mode, which is basically still recording, but also playing what you've already hit. So you start layering sounds on it while it's doing the overdub. And that's really all there is to it for MPC style recording. You just layer little beats on, until you have like a full song or a full at least pattern so I'll give you an example of that it's not gonna be good cuz I don't even remember what sounds are on actually I should test that out real quick find something hmm. maybe I'll use the kick and the snare first just do something simple like that so record and then once you hit play it'll count down a four hit metronome and then that's when the recording starts oops there it goes So that's the basic gist of it. You just start layering each part on. You can do two at once. You know, some people are so good they'll be they can play the whole rhythm in one go with all their fingers. But uh, I usually do two or one sound at a time, depending. But uh, once you do that, one of the biggest helpful things about the NPC setup is quantizing or sort of like time fixing like if things are offbeat like I'm not great at timing you can have it sort of realign everything to be more on beat with the music uh, the, the time sig like in, in this case it's 4-4 four four. but uh, 
generally dance music is 4-4, like boom, 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 boom kind of thing. But uh, it'll sync it up, basically. And then swing is sort of the opposite of that. It slightly swing sounds off of alignment so that they have a more human or natural feel. And a lot of people love the swing on MPC software and hardware because it, it kind of gives it that hip-hop feel. And a lot of people that use MPC use hip-hop style sounds. Like, that's the reason they got it. So uh, it really fits with the style to use the swing a lot. But uh, I was going to see, they have time fixing. There it is, time correction. And uh, settings for it. It's basically quantizing, but I'm not, I haven't played with it enough to know how to use it. There's time division, so maybe, okay, that separates the grid. So you can get really fast. If you're wanting hi-hats to be like machine gun hi-hats, you could paint them in those grids like that. Let's see what happens if I do that. Oh, nothing changed. It changed the grid, but it didn't change any of the alignment. So I'm not sure about that. Maybe if you just hit apply. No. But basically, there is time fixing, so if you don't, beat it out perfect you can fix it and make it more correct sounding that's basically it uh, then you have the Q knobs and effects that I was mentioning they allow you to change the pads while they're playing which also means uh, change the it can be automated or you can basically record that is what I'm saying so if you want to change the pitch of something and give it a cool sound or maybe filtered effect you can do that while the automated sounds are playing and recording over to mode so let me see about changing one of these I thought effects were just applied on the fly but it looks like you have to preset them up like they're inserted. Let me I'll go ahead and pick that reverb and see if you can realign it with you know. So they're just kinda locked onto that whichever pad. For that kind of change I'd have to just go around more. Filters cell phone. Damn. Okay, here we go. Here's insert. So you would you would pick from here internal effects I want to maybe delay that would be really noticeable I just want something that you'll notice so I can test it out so I got delay selected now we go back to Q mode effects pad 1 and there should be one for A1 now somewhere there it is that's kind of weird the way they have it set up. I'm just so used to my other software. So you can change either the feedback, the time, or how dry and wet the sound is. So, do a lot of feedback and then I'll slow down the timing. Actually, that feedback's too loud, I think. Too much. There we go. <laughs> so, you can't, I mean, it takes a little bit of setting up. It's not hard, just time consuming. But if you wanted to set up effects and the program related stuff like tuning to each knob for each pad, you could do it. But, I mean, my issue with it is, if you're already familiar with your own DAW, like Ableton, Reason, or in my case, FL Studio, you already know everything. You can do that kind of effect, oh, lay that over this whole VST, and you could do it in a matter of seconds once you're familiar with your software. So, I, honestly, I'm not going to go out of my way to sit there and set it up in here when I can go and lay those effects over the output of this in my own DAW setup and I can do it way quicker. So I don't know. I mean, if you're already using MPC software and you're more familiar with the flow of things, you might enjoy it more, but I've already found it kind of annoying. And the fact that the whole MIDI thing doesn't set up, sync up automatically, that's a pain. Because that means I can't use the physical knobs. Like, the whole point of a controller is to be able to use physical items 
to get what you want in the software so it feels more like a real instrument so if I'm sitting there having to hit the physical pad but click over here on the knob with my mouse that's too much like that's a hassle and it defeats the purpose of having a physical controller so honestly I think they just threw NPC essentials in here to help boost sales of the controller because it looks like like when I go into help under NPC help or even setting up the MMC controls which is something you need for some software uh, if you scroll through this guide it's not even made for the MPK it's made for some of the other NPC hardware controllers they put out like the, that renaissance thing or whatever some of the others were so like because I went through it trying to read how to set up the MIDI section if I can find it again and it basically there it is MIDI control mode this is the mode that would allow you to set up the Q knobs and everything in the sliders to work with this MPC essential software and as you're going through it it's talking about MPC Renaissance and MPC Studio and MPC Element uh, so it's sort of like they basically took this software that was made for these other controllers and just tossed it in with the MPK without really setting it up to work with it. You definitely have the pads working with it and the keys, but everything else, like the knobs, that's something you really want. So it's annoying that it's not in there. But overall, you could still record beats with this. But honestly, if you're already using your own DAW, uh, you and you've got this controller you're probably going to use it with that rather than this unless you're just in love with NPC stuff <laughs> but uh, anyway that's pretty much it uh, you, you can set up effects and stuff like I said it's a little bit of a hassle but it all works fine the pads are definitely great the, as far as sensitivity they're awesome like it even lights up in different colors to show you how hard you're hitting so it starts out yellow then goes to orange and then red when you hit full blast so it gives you a visual cue of how hard you're hitting uh, just little touches like that are nice but overall I just don't like the workflow even when I used to have an MPC 1000 like the older 80s and 90s model and uh, you know it was fun at the time but once you get acquainted with software as much as I like hardware, you know, I like to mix a controller with software. Because once you get acquainted with that, the MPC workflow, it's like a bunch of menus and you just gotta set it all up right. And by the time you do that, you could have already laid out a whole melody or a whole song by the time you set up your MPC stuff. So that's my, that's always been my complaint with the cost. So overall, I recommend the controller. I just, would say if you're not already into like the MPC Essentials setup or MPC workflow in general I would say use your controller with a DAW whichever one you already use because uh, uh, I mean it's not worth learning all this when the workflow is going to be quicker and better in whatever you're familiar with like I wouldn't use MPC Essentials just to be able to say oh yeah I use you know MPC I'm an Akai person like it's, I don't think it's, I don't know, they've put enough work into it that it's a nice program, but if you're not already familiar with it, you're going to spend way too much time trying to figure out a bunch of settings, and all, a lot of it is stuff you can already do in any DAW, so, I mean, you could use it just to record patterns, I mean, it's not hard to do that. So you could do that and then bring those patterns into your DAW, like export them as a sound, as a WAV file or something. But uh, I don't know. It's up to everybody, really, what they want to do with it. But I personally won't really use it that much. I, lo I love the controller. I just don't really have a use for this software. There's plenty of things that do the same stuff it does, and I think better. So it's up to you, but that's my verdict. Thanks for watching.